Hello. From what we can read from the New Testament, if we had to pick a patron saint for this functional church community, I believe the church in Corinth would be the best pick. From what we can read in Paul's letter, it was a complete mess. <laughs> the people were fighting, they were arguing with one another about almost every topic. Who was the best? Who was the best leader? Who had the best moral? Uh, who had the right worship? And so on, and the best gifts? So on and so on and so on. So we, we find this letter, the first letter to the Corinthian, and the beginning. And what is interesting would be what we don't find. Um, someone honestly like me the first impulse would be okay i'm writing this and i'm telling you i'm coming to fix all your problems or i send you one of my assistant and he will be your interim minister or pastor or i cannot nobody can come but i can tell you that she's wrong and he is right and or he's right she's wrong so on and on and on and on but that's not what Paul's do in, to begin his letter. First, start to remind everyone that we are called to be saints. And when, we're when Paul talks about saints, does not talk about or write about someone who is perfect, who is above sin, the perfect and exemplar moral. Saints are for him ordinary people, like you and me, I would say, who are set aside, who are called by God for God's work in the world. And those saints find their identity as saints when they work together. That's why we have the expression the communion of saints. It's together, this togetherness if I can say it, that people find their connection, to find their link to one another, and find their link with God. And then Paul goes on with a longer sentence. Paul was known for his, is known for his long sentence. I give thanks to my God, always for you, because of the grace of God has been given in you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gifts as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. In a way, he's saying, yes, things have been difficult. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? I still have faith in you. I still love you. And most importantly, I believe you have all the tools at your disposal to get out of this mess. It, it's, and, and your success, your faithfulness, does not depend on one charismatic leaders that will embody all the gifts of the Spirit that will be even better than Jesus himself. No. You, all of you, put together, have all the gifts, all the resources to make this a success. And it's often the case in their churches when, or any organization, political party, every group, but we're talking about churches here, when the leader leave. And the first reaction, of course, is sadness. And then when it starts to sink in, people often goes like, oh my God, what we will become, what we will do, uh, we will not be able to do this. And the texts like this remind us that, first of all, this is not the church of one individual, the church of one leader. This is God's church. And it's God, faithfulness, it's God's grace that brings people together. And it's on our shoulder, all of us, not just one or two. And 
in a strange way, it put less pressure on us because it spread to all of us. And when we struggle with vision, we struggle with conflict, when we struggle with the change in staff, we are minded, first of all, trust God. God who has been there in the past, that is there today and will be there in the future. You can trust God. Don't look for a savior that will come and tell us everything that we know, everything that we need to do. No, it's in you. It's in us, all of us, to do this work we've been called to do, to be God's world in this time, in this place of the world. And that's the good news for us, all of us. That's it for this week. Thank you once again for watching this. And I remain Stéphane Vermette, the lectionary man, and I hope to connect with you very soon. Bye-bye.